What is going on, people? Happy Walks of Wisdom Wednesday. Uh, today, I'm just going to let you know, if you want to watch all the previous episodes of Walks of Wisdom, you can head on over to walksofwisdom.com. I've got them all recorded and lined up for you there. Um, if you'd like to get access to listening to these new episodes as they are recorded, there's also an option for you to join uh, the Facebook group where I'm recording these. And so today, guys, I'm very excited. Um, the topic is very uh, simple and um, something that you can start implementing right away. And that's what's more exciting about this than the actual content of it. But today I want to talk about interacting versus transacting for instant success. And so basically what this means is I'm going to break this down a little bit because there's there's some multifold topics that go into this that bring the concept all together, but the implementation is very simple. So when we're talking about the difference between an interaction versus a transaction, it's basically chosen focus as the difference, all right? And so for me, I have a family. Uh, You may not have a family. (laughs) Some people do, some people don't. But as we go through life, we understand that there are certain things that we have to do, we call these obligations, and there are some things that we want to do, which we call inspirations. And so as we're going through our day, we we get better and better at the obligation stuff, at the stuff that we know we have to do, because that's part of moving forward and progressing in the whole life growth process, right? And so the transactions, the things that we have to get done, you know, we have to brush our teeth and we have to eat food and we have to go to school or go to work or whatever it may be in order to achieve the type of life that we want. Uh, most of that comes down to transactions. We're, we're, we're chasing the things that we feel we have to do in order to get to the places where we want to be. All right. And so we get better at better at conditioning ourselves to operate in this transactional mode where we kind of lose focus in the moment of what's going on after we've done something for a certain number of repetitions, right? When you, when you first start doing something brand new, you're very focused, you're very aware, you're very consciously, intentionally choosing and feeling and doing all of these things. And, and that is the definition of interaction, okay? When something is brand new, we tend to interact more heavily because we don't know what's going on all the time. We don't know what is going to happen as a result of that interaction. And so we, we put our focus onto it, we're paying attention, we're involved in the moment, and, and we, we tend to come away with something a lot stronger than what we went into that moment um, as, okay? Now, going through the obligation fulfillment of life where, you know, we gotta, we gotta drive around and do the things and we gotta go to the store and we gotta pay the bills and we gotta do all those things, they fill up so much of our time that we sort of become numb to having to get those things done. We learn to push past the emotional involvement because like who likes paying bills, right? That's not fun. Who wants to drive around and drop kids off at soccer practice? Like maybe you really love driving and maybe, you know, that joy of seeing your kid excited for the soccer practice is like exciting or whatever. But at the end of the day, the obligations simply become steps that we go through because we're required to, not because this is something we look forward to, all right? And that's one of the differences for me is obligation sake is stuff we do because of the result, not because of the momentary action and the, the involvement in it. We do it because this is what we got to get done, right? The inspiration is stuff that we look forward to because we know we're going to enjoy the act of doing it. And so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today is changing that mental focus to eliminate as much transactional interface as possible, where you simply go through a a thing to get past it, all right? Now, this is 
this is okay in a toleration sake where you're bombarded by so many things that have to be done not all of them are going to be enjoyable but guys let me tell you something serious there is no other point in your life where you ever exist the moment that you are in right now whether you're listening to this podcast or you're you're out doing something else later on the moment that you are aware of is your only existence in the world and so if you sacrifice so many of those moments and you sacrifice the emotional connection in that moment because you have told yourself this is a transactional situation this is one of those things of obligation i just have to get done so i'm not going to pay attention i'm just going to go through the motions and do the thing you miss out you miss out on so much of life and we get really good really good at conditioning ourselves to feel like more and more of our life is obligational and less and less is inspirational. We tend to, as we grow up especially, get less excitement and less joy out of little things, out of the the small moments, because we look at the big picture all the time. What are the major things? What are the most important things I got to get done today? What are the things that uh, you know are required of me? And, and we put all our attention into those things first because knocking down the big dominoes is how you move forward faster. But our world and our existence is not created about, around big dominoes. We don't live just to say we did. The purpose of life is happiness, guys. So if you haven't watched any of my episodes, go back to the very, very first episode. This was, wow, over four years ago, but the meaning of life is happiness. And I break this down in my very first episode of Walks of Wisdom because it's a structure that's built on top of itself, guys. So so understanding that this succumbing to the obligation feeling of everything being transactional we just have to get through the moment to get to the next moment ruins every moment it ruins your ability to be in a situation and appreciate it for what it is and this took me a long time to understand because you know growing up my parents got divorced when i was young and so you know there was a lot of things that i had to do with you know limited exposure and understanding and financial abilities and time you know committed and all these things that got me really good at the obligation side where i had to suck it up and make it happen right like you're nothing is handed to you in life and so i got really good at a young age at figuring out how to look past the emotional involvement and it was the thought process of what do i need to do to get through this moment really well What is my transactional functionality? How can I get good at this step, whatever it is that I was dealing with, so I can come out with the best result as as the outcome, okay? And what I didn't realize was having that focus made me miss so many of the things that were happening in the moment where I would go into... uh, Let's say, let's say sports, okay? If I would go into a, a soccer practice and the goal was to learn how to get really good at, say, a corner kick, okay? Just an example here. I would break it down and I would watch who was good at it and how were they positioning themselves where were they kicking the ball? What kind of angle did they have on their foot? How was it curving? Where was the ball landing? What kind of height was on all these like transactional pieces that how do I get the best corner kick into the the game, right? And what I would disconnect from is the people and the involvement of the event. And so if if I if it was my turn to do a kick and and I went to kick the ball and it didn't go the way that I wanted it to. I would get upset at myself because I was so intent on creating an expected outcome 
that because I had put the time and effort into watching the things and breaking it down and practicing on my own, that when I went to go do the thing, even in practice, if it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, it was really struggling for me emotionally to be like, man, I suck at this, <laughs> you know, and not, not get down on myself. And that's, that's part of the negative aspect is we don't control the outcome. So putting this expectation on ourselves to be good in moments makes it really difficult to actually enjoy the process. But at the same time, I was also disconnecting from the enjoyment of the process. You know, I would, I would watch so many of my teammates and in between the kicks, they're playing with each other, you know, pushing around and joking and having a good time and laughing and things. And I always felt like I was the only one kind of taking stuff seriously sometimes. And it's a good thing, you know, when you're really trying to grow and learn and progress, like there is a stage of learning and analysis that you have to go through, but you can't do it at the sacrifice of the momentary interaction because those are the moments where you get to deal with things and you get to enjoy things. You get that moment of, especially at soccer practice, you know, the teammates were such a big deal. Being able to hang out with people and have fun and talk crap to each other and, you know, actually get better together. Um, those were those were pieces I didn't understand as to the importance, all right? And so I missed out on a lot of enjoyment of sports. I missed out on so much of the enjoyment because I was so focused on the obligational pieces of trying to get better so that when we came time to perform, that I would be better, okay? And yes, I did get better because of those steps, but at the end of the day, nobody remembers how many games we won. Nobody remembers how many goals I scored or how many I blocked as a goalie or whatever. That piece is gone, okay? And again, this is that common saying of nobody remembers the things that you said or did. They only remember how you made them feel. And this is why today's talk is so important. I'm up on the road here, so it may be a little loud, but <clears throat> switching from a focus transactionally to a focus interactionally allows you to put more focus on the emotion involved. Now, as a guy, <laughs> I've gotten really good at disconnecting from the emotional engagement and how, how that drives my choice making, right? I, I look at what are the steps that have to be done? What is the problem that we're dealing with and how can I solve this? And then I go into effectiveness mode and I try to figure out what those steps are and how to do them well and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but so much of our life is not actually there for obligation sake. We are not there to accomplish anything, all right? We, we put an importance in front of ourselves to justify the priority. When we have things that we, you know, do on a daily basis, we don't ever wanna feel like we're just wasting our time. At least for me, I have a hard time feeling like I'm wasting my time. Time is so precious these days that I want to maximize every moment I get. And it used to be a focus on maximizing the outcome. And that was, that was a lot easier to do when I was single and young and didn't have kids. But as I grew up and I got older, saying that I'm already grown up, <laughs> I still got a long way to go. But as I got children, I got to start spending more time with them. And when they're very young, it is so easy to be interactional because it's new, because the kids are learning and experiencing things that they've never seen before. And the world is just this wondrous place. And you're new as a parent and you, you figure out how to, you know, help the kid not fall down and keep them from crying too much and all of those things. But as the kids started to grow up and get a little bit older, I found myself 
getting less and less natural joy out of those moments of interaction with my kids. And not to say I didn't like, you know, interacting with my kids, but after giving them a bath a hundred times or 200 times, it becomes very repetitive. They're getting in the bath, they're getting clean, they're getting out. You're usually under some kind of time constraint because either they've got to get to bed to get up early or you got to get to bed or whatever the situation is. It's been a long day, you're tired, like, but that bath time, and this is just an example of one, that bath time is more than just getting clean, okay? It is about the connection. And I never realized this for a long time. I mean, I've been on this path for quite a while now, but when my son was born, you know, getting him bathed up was like this big process, (laughs) you know? There was the convincing stage, and then there was the, like, preparation stage to get all of the, the toys and the towel ready and all of the you know, scrubby stuff and everything, you know, ready to do the bath. And then you got in and there was the time committed to getting him actually washed and all of those things. And then getting him out and getting him dried and putting the lotion on and getting, you know, ready for laying down and getting ready for bed. And like, it was a big process focused around getting through the process. But there were so many moments that now looking back, that man, (laughs) did I absolutely love bath time. Not because I got him clean really well, but because of the times when little things happened that I didn't expect. He would, you know, obviously when he could start talking, like he would say stuff to me or he would be pretending to play with a toy And just watching the world through his eyes brought this immense joy to me to remember how simple the world was as a kid. And that bath time was was just one interaction space, guys. This is one time of repetition that I got really good at disconnecting from emotionally because it started to feel like This was just another thing that we got to do to get through this part of the day, to get to the next day, to get to the thing, right? And again, life is not based on transactional situations, right? Our circumstances are not based around getting through. Our entire existence in the world is based around being involved and feeling. Our whole world is, is spent searching for feeling. And so... The bath time is one thing, but like driving the kids to school is another. My kids are a really big inspiration for them. So I'm going to, I'm going to lean on them, uh, you know, a little bit here. And so driving the kids to school, same kind of thing, man. If you got kids right now, give me a, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're a parent, but taking the kids to school, for example, holy cow, can that be an obligation? This is one of those situations where you got to get up on time and they got to be clean and you got to have clothes and lunches and backpacks and homework and all of the things that are required for them to go be successful at school. And if you're able to go through all those motions in the morning and, and somehow miraculously you get the kids in the car and you're on the way to school with all of the stuff, if you do not stop not stop driving because you got to get there but stop yourself in your awareness factor what are you thinking about on that drive to school what are you saying to your kids on that road to school what are you preparing them for throughout their day those are the pieces that can be very very empowering or very very detrimental Because when it comes to this situation of driving your kids to school, that is the last thing they're going to hear from you before you drop them off, right? And so on your way, you could be stressed. You could be emotionally transactional. 
and, and yelling at them about how long it took to get out the door, telling them how bad their hair looks because they wouldn't sit still and let you comb it, telling them, you know, all of the, the negative things that go around what already happened or what you think is going to happen or how frustrated you are, whatever that situation is. And you can make that entire ride to school very awful, not only for yourself, but for your kids. Because that, in, that emotion that they get out of the car with is what they are going to carry with them into the rest of the day. They're not gonna remember why they're upset. They're not gonna remember that they sucked at holding still to get their hair done. They don't give a crap about their hair. You know, especially as they're real young, <laughs> okay? They don't care if they were late for school. And honestly, you know, being late for school isn't like the end of the world. But they will remember getting out of that car emotionally supported or emotionally broken down. And this is very, very important to control this factor because, especially when it's something that happens repetitiously, you have that impact compounded. And so if, if you can stop yourself on the drive to school and recognize how young your kids are and how much of a blessing it is to be at this place where they're healthy and they have the ability to become educated and they're excited for the social engagement and everything is, is on a track to get them to progress, but the progress that they are going to encounter is not based on what happens during that drive to school. Maybe you need to tell them something like, hey, I'm going to be here early to pick you up or something to that effect. That's a transactional need in that sake because it's a requirement. But the emotional response is a choice. How you decide to interact, to be in that moment with your kids and ask them about things that they're looking forward to and talk to them about what could be exciting in the day and creating this emotional positivity that when they get out of that car and they go up to the school, they got a smile on their face. That emotion carries through the whole day. Yes, it may get less and less as the day goes by, but then guess what? You get to pick them up after school. Holy crap, if you are a parent and you do the drop off and pick up cycle every day, consider yourself very fortunate, okay? There's a lot of parents that don't have the ability to do that. Their jobs don't allow them the time or whatever it may be and the kids gotta ride the bus or they go to school with the neighbor or whatever it is. We get to decide whether we are fortunate to be able to do the things that we do or if it's a detriment because these are things that we have to do okay so if you are one of these parents that feels like driving your kids to school in the morning is the worst part of your day because it's a stressful thing to get them ready and you're rushing to get there and once you get close to the school the traffic all sucks and parents are walking across the street and nobody knows how to park and drive and the you know crossing guard is cutting you off and not letting you go through like you can put yourself in a really really tumultuous place or you can realize that's how it's going to be every day and you don't control it <laughs> focusing on the stuff that you can control will release so much stress from your life you cannot change the way other people drive you cannot change the decision of when the crossing guard comes out into the street. You cannot change how many parking spaces there are at the school. So focusing on getting stressed by this, even for a single day, let alone every day, and especially you're talking twice, you're talking morning and after school, man, you can really create a lot of negativity inside of yourself. And if you allow that to happen, there is no way that that is not going to be carried over to your children. And it's not their fault. It's not their choice of how many parking spaces there are, or how bad parents suck at driving, okay? 
don't put it on your kids. Yes, they can get better at, you know, being more efficient in the morning, but children will do more for you when they feel appreciated than they will if they feel like they're going to be punished. If there is a negative aspect to it, kids will, they'll do enough to avoid it, but they'll, they'll figure out how to get around it. But if you, if you bring that positive emotion to the interaction, even just in the drive to school, the kids will remember that and they will seek out that positive reinforcement. They crave that stuff. And so you're able to be in this, in this moment, disconnect from the stress of things that you don't control, put the focus positively, emotionally and communicationally into things that are going to leave with a good memory of that interaction. Your children will positively benefit, you will positively benefit, and you will start to get better at implementing this factor into every single interaction that you have. We do this hundreds, thousands of times a day. Taking the kids to school is just one thing, right? But man, we only get that for a short period of time. One of my favorite sayings is things won't be like this for long. Life tends to, excuse me, life tends to change pretty quickly. So if you're, if you're going through your day to day and you feel like, man, this sucks. I've been doing the same thing over and over, blah, blah, blah. Find out what's in your control and you know, how you can do something differently about it. But how bad something sucks is based on your perception. It's how you look at it, okay? It is not actually based on the circumstances. Now, obviously, like, if you're in prison or, you know, something really horrible, first of all, you did something bad to get there, but secondly, no matter what the circumstances around you are, how you feel is always a choice. It's always a choice. And if you give up that ability to control your emotional feelings and responses and intention, the world is a tough place. It is not easy to manage. So you'll be able to really scale yourself and grow and thrive in the world when you control how you interact instead of going through things as a transaction. Because after you drop your kids off at school, for example, and you get to drive to work, and it's the same thing every single day. You probably take the same route from the school to the office and you got to drive through the crappy traffic and you're wearing these uncomfortable clothes so that you look good in a building that nobody ever sees you in and you're dealing with people that you may not necessarily enjoy and you're doing a job that pays the bills but isn't all that exciting. Whatever your situation is, there, there's easily a way to look at it as negative and to treat it as a transaction. And that's what we do. When we are not excited about something, we treat it as a transaction. It is part of what I gotta do to get through this moment. And as parents, and I'm focusing on this pretty heavy today, but as parents, we get really good at transacting with our children. And we don't interact with them near as much. We tell them the stuff that they have to do. And, and, and we just try to push them and push them and push them to become adults as early as possible, to become responsible and to pay attention and, you know, have high expectations of their performance and all these things. And we do this over and over and over and over and over every single day because we create this idea in our head of what it's going to be like when we're not there. When they finally grow up, we're not going to be able to have this influence to help you do things better. Guys, they will figure things out, okay? But at the same time, we're doing this at the sake of sacrifice of interacting with our children. If the only purpose of being around our children is to teach them how to become an adult, then we're missing out. We're missing out on those little moments of joy from the little things. Uh, man, this plane is very loud. One of the things that I absolutely look forward to more than anything 
is, is spending time with my kids without something that we are actually having to do. Just to sit down with them and talk to them. We're not trying to get through a transaction. We're not trying to accomplish anything. You know, even if we go to the park or something like that, the point is to go there to play or to do whatever. One of the things that, you know, really brings me a lot of joy is, is literally just talking to my kids because their perspective of how things go in the world and how they understand stuff is so unique. But it also allows me to engage with them in a way that is positively and emotionally supportive. And guys, that is the stuff that will carry with them into that adult world so much more impactfully than any of the stuff that I ever said or did. I could tell my daughter every day, you have to shower. You have to take a shower. And that time preparing her and trying to convince her and remind her and tell her why, that's a transactional piece. But getting in that moment and stopping and telling her, hey, I really love the way that you smell when you get out of the shower. Can you, can you come up to me when you get out of your shower so I can smell you? Okay, maybe that sounds a little weird, but it immediately changes the focus of why she's showering. Because kids want to impress us, they want to please us, they want us to, to really feel good about the stuff that they're doing. And so if we're able to focus our interaction, <laughs> it's the same word over and over, but the way that we deal with them in the moment and the emotion that we are focusing on bringing out of that interaction being something positive, then man, we can change the way these repetitive situations come out in the end. Having that shower go down well is very important because it has to happen every day. She's got to go into the shower every single day. And if I'm constantly, and if you're a parent and you got kids that are growing up, like getting them to take a shower, I don't know what the problem is with this, but it is tough. It is something you just are going to fight against, all right? And so if you have a positive reinforcement that comes out of what, what the actual outcome is, then you can turn around how easily it is to get them into the shower, making them feel like you're impressed. And I am, I love it when she goes in stinking and comes out smelling good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's something that is for real. That's not a pretend mode, but she gets to, to disconnect from the struggle of why I don't want to get into the shower or why I want to wait till later or whatever the excuse is that makes it a negative emotional interaction. She understands that I'm going to feel good about it. And she understands that she's going to feel good about me feeling good about it. And once that happened a couple of times, it became so much easier, so much easier to get her into the shower because it went from, okay, it's almost time for bed and we got to hurry and get you showered and get you ready so you can get up in time in the morning and blah, blah, blah. And all this like negative have to obligation statements to baby, I'm so glad it's shower time because I absolutely cannot wait to smell how good you smell from the new shampoo that you got or the new body wash or I can't wait to see how much your hair, you know, grows when it's wet compared to when it's dry or whatever, whatever that situation is that you look forward to the outcome, then the interaction in the moment itself is better. And, and when you start to compound this throughout your day, where the drive to school is an enjoyable piece that you set your kids off in their day and in a positive emotional state. And that time at the end of the day, you know, is, is exciting because the kids are going to come out and make you feel good about them taking a shower and, and thanking them, you know, being so impressed about them cleaning up their plate after their meal 
And all of these things that we consider a transaction, yeah, you gotta take the shower, yeah, you gotta get to the kids to school, yeah, you gotta clean up after eating, whatever, those can be negative transactional situations that compounded over and over can create a lasting negative emotional impression. Not only on your kids, but on yourself. And this is for everybody. I've just been talking about kids. This can be, you know, work relationships, spouses. This can be anything that you deal with. What I want to bring this back to is putting yourself in the moment. In that moment of conscious awareness, focus on the things that you can control and realizing that the most beneficial outcome is being involved, paying attention to what's happening in the moment, not focusing on the outcome all the time. Because there's so many times when you're trying to get through the thing to get to the next thing that you miss pieces that you needed to see in that moment that would have helped you later on. Um, Talking to my wife, for example, I'm, I'm very bad sometimes about listening to the details of what she's telling me. She, she tells me a lot of stuff and, you know, a lot of times I'm trying to grasp it and go through, especially if I'm walking out the door and she's telling me something. I may not catch every piece because I'm focused on the thing that I'm already doing. And me leaving and not catching what she said in every sake can actually be detrimental because it's information I needed to know. Or at minimum, it just makes her feel good to be heard. She wants to know that the things that she's saying are are being taken well and makes her feel important. So even if it's not necessary information for me, just stopping and listening to what it is that she's telling me and thanking her for sharing that information with me. Man, it's a win-win. You get that interaction in every sake and you win. the, The people that you deal with win because they get to come out feeling good. You get to win because you're avoiding stress in the moment. And here's the big, the big win, guys, is you get better and better at doing this. You start adding this into more and more of the pieces of your world that you get to control what that emotional focus and response is. And you'll come out of that with a generalized, better emotional day. <laughs> There's so many examples I could give of this, but, but just sit yourself down in a moment. And when you go to have dinner, for example, don't be on your phone. If you're talking to somebody, don't text at the same time. Pay attention to what that person is saying and feeling that person out and giving them a positive emotional response and support. Because that moment is the only one that exists. That text message can wait. Unless it's something really important, then you can let them know, hey, I just have to respond to this real quick and then I'll be done. They're going to feel good. They're going to be like, okay, thank you. Thank you for making me feel good. Feeling like I'm important enough to say, hey, I want to prioritize you. Give me two seconds and then I can do that. But if you're talking to somebody in a conversation and your head's down and you're texting, and you're just like, uh-huh, okay, yeah, all right. Like, you're interacting in, in a zero sake. <laughs> you're going through it as a transaction and you're making that person feel like shit. And so then even when you get done with the text message, they come back, they're like, oh, you weren't even paying attention anyways. I don't even want to talk to you. All right, so, so very much, guys, take control of the factors of what you focus on in the moment that you're in and make it an interaction versus a transaction. And you will come out with a positive emotional state. The people that you interact with will be impacted positively and you can start compounding this throughout all of the moments of your day. And what's gonna be awesome is you're gonna start to realize your life really isn't as bad as you think it is. You start to find things that are just amazing amazing like right now i am out here walking i could get mad because these planes keep coming over and it's super loud and messing up my audio i love the fact that i'm out here in the sun and i get to hear airplanes overhead and i get to 
have birds chirping and there's you know people walking down the street in front of me and there's dogs out here barking and stuff like I am appreciating the fact that during the middle of the day when most of you guys are at work I am in a situation in life where I can come out and I can go for a walk and I can talk to you about these things that are on my mind so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me please let me know in the comments if this is something that hit home for you if this is a message that is impacting you and you feel like somebody else needs to hear it, hit the share button. Give it out to somebody else who might have a positive impact from hearing these words because guys, I'm not here to give you the answers. What I'm here to do is help you change your perception about the way that you think about things. Because most of the time, I'm not gonna be there. I'm not gonna be holding your hand and telling you what to do when you're sitting down in an interaction state. But if you were hearing these words, and this is something that came out as a positive change for you, hopefully that carries with you into that next time when you have the opportunity to be in an interaction state instead of running through it like a transaction. So appreciate you guys. Let me know what you got on comments. Uh, uh, look forward to our next episode coming up next week. Uh, we're gonna keep doing this every single Wednesday. Again, all, access to all the old episodes, you can hit walksofwisdom.com. That'll give you access to everything that has already been recorded. And if you want to get in on some of these new episodes as I record them, there's also an option for that there. So I look forward to you guys uh, hanging out with me again, and I'll see you next time.